Stage nine, the final stage. I know a lot of you are here for Double and Iris. Don't worry, we'll get there. We gotta get through the first ones uh, before we can get to them. So, Rainy Turtloid, Spark Mandrill. For those of you that have just started following us for stage nine, well, my name is Huey Freeman, and I have a list of tips in the description that work in general, but I also tend to break down these fights and let you know what to do in particular things. So, for this one, tip number one, figure out which Maverick you're gonna focus on. Spark Mandrill is the answer to this, and mainly because his weakness, the Shotgun Ice, neuters him pretty hard. And, at this point, if you've gotten to stage nine, you probably understand how badly it damages him. But he still has some things that he can do to annoy you. So, for example, tip number four is make the most out of your charge shot and boost. What I usually use that for in this particular fight is covering in the air to avoid Turtloid's missiles. And the important part about that is you can't get up there without climbing the walls. And Spark Man will 10 point punch you off those walls. So, be mindful of that, and a lot of that is why we're taking out Mandrill first, also because he does a lot of things to get in your way if you leave him alive too long. But, he's not too bad. And then that leaves you with Rainy Turtloid. Alright, I want to be mindful of tip number three. You have three lives to fight three battles, space out any sort of lives, unless you're practicing. If you die on this fight, you might as well reset because these are child's play you know, compared to what's going on in 9-3. So, space out your resources. And when it comes to that, you understand if you've gotten to this point that three well-placed charge shots can knock out the jewel and make Turtloid vulnerable. However, you also have to mind when you're timing it. I tend to do it after the missiles. That way you have the most time to hit him, either with the charge shot or, surprisingly enough, the shotgun ice. The shotgun ice actually does a decent amount of damage, even compared to the charge shot. So, be mindful of that, but at the same time, when you're doing Legacy Collection 2, you may end up using something like the shotgun ice against gate. So we'll get to that in a moment, that particular tip in a moment. But the point is, don't use up all of your resources. But then again, if we've gotten to stage nine, you've already faced off against Rainy Turtloid, so you should know what to expect here. I would say Spark Mandrill is not a worse, a worse partner for Turtloid than Armored Armadillo is, so... That being said, the charge weakness, which ironically Spark Mandrill's weapon, does a good amount of damage to Turtloid, so maybe the matchup is better for stage 9. Anyway, when we get to this point, it's hard to dodge, just do what you can, understand, again, your entire job for this life is to take out 9-1, so it's okay to take damage, just don't lose a life on this fight, and you should be alright. Alright, so 9-2, Storm Eagle, Metal Shark Player. We're going to be using the Meteor Rain, but if you are playing Legacy Collection 2, which in this particular video I am, you need to be very mindful of the fact that Dynamo's weakness is the same as Metal Shark Player's, which is the Meteor Rain. And the important part with that is don't use up more of the energy than you have to. So, we're going against tip number six, which usually helps in regards to going with the charged weakness. And we are trying to conserve as much energy as possible. Now, it doesn't mean as much if you're playing Legacy Collection 1. So, because this is not going to be very useful against Double or Iris. Um, obviously, Metal Shark Player is the bigger threat. There's not much to deal with with Storm Eagle unless he can knock you off the stage, and he definitely can't do that here. When he brings in Metal Shark Player, brings in his 
zom uh, maverick zombies for lack of a better term go ahead and use charge shots if you can uh, mainly to conserve this weapon ammo ignore storm eagle for the most part unless he's dashing at you then maybe take take note of him but even then you don't have to most of the time what you hope to get into a pattern of is when he starts resurrecting Stink Chameleon, because that's a fairly predictable pattern to keep in mind. Once he's out though, we've done this a few times against Storm Eagle, there's nothing to worry about. Just dash out of the way, hit him with the Beam Saber or with the Charge Shot, duck the Tornado, or don't duck the Tornado, just let him blow you into the wall. It, there's really not much to deal with here. It's a good, for lack of a better term, Pallet Cleanser before the 9-3 fights. The thing I want to hone in in regards to the 9-3 fights before we get to those is the fact that there's a lot of chaos on the screen. You're going to take a lot of damage. Understand that. Yes, you could technically... I'm sure there are people that have done no damage runs. Actually, I've seen a couple of them. But... Don't go for that. That that's gonna make things a lot more harder on you than you need to uh, than need than necessary. Just understand, and that that the first few times you do these fights, you're going to not win. So just deal with the practice, deal with trying to be defensive, and I'll teach you how to deal with this when we finally go on the offensive. All right. This is one of the ones everyone's been waiting for, Double and Iris. Now, there's two primary ways you can go about this. First is using Double's weakness, and the second is not using Double's weakness. I'm going to show you using Double's weakness, and I'm gonna only talk about that one for right now because it's gonna go so quickly in the beginning. Keep in mind that when you hit Double with his weakness, he lets off little turrets and little traps to get you with. And something similar also happens with Iris. So what you need to do is, keeping in mind that when you fire the his weakness as a charge shot, if you get hit, that charge shot goes away. You need to stay relatively close to double and hit him with that charge shot as many times as possible. You're gonna take damage, it's a bit reckless, but you're gonna knock him out quickly. Also, at the same time, take advantage of your invincibility frames because those are the safe opportunities to fire it off. Once you get him down, things get a lot more straightforward. Now, the main difference between going this route and going the charge shot route is, if you know how to defend against and how to dodge their combined attacks, attacks better, it's less chaotic to use the charge shot. But that's a big if, and a lot of people don't know how to do that very well. So the easier method, and the thing that's easier to learn, is to use the weakness method. Once you get him down, let me tell you a little bit about what Iris does. Iris takes about three seconds to head, to, uh, to head your way, and then she will back off to the wall, and then she'll fire her large purple laser, and if the crystal's out, that will fire off a laser as well. Really, once you stick on one side of the screen, there's not much you're gonna have to deal with from a contact damage standpoint if you're dealing with just her. There's two other points to that though. The first is double makes it incredibly difficult because double makes you wanna switch sides very often with the way he's coming at you. And the second thing to keep in mind is you cannot damage her by hitting her. You have to hit her enough times and take out enough of her little turrets that eventually her purple crystal comes out. If her purple crystal comes out before you take out double, you might lose. It is just might happen. There's just a lot to go to deal with at that particular moment. But once you take out double, something that you're not used to dealing with in X4 happens. Colonel comes out in the middle of the Iris fight to defend his sister. Colonel has no health bar, so Really what you need to do is, as you may have guessed at this point, stay on one side, stay relatively high up so that you don't have to deal with most of Colonel's attacks, except for the spacing one, which, as we noted in our tips, use 
tip number four and the hover boots to understand where you need to space. And when she deals with her double laser, you can either bait the, bait the vertical laser with your hover boots and then safely hover to the wall or bait it so that it would hit the wall and then jump out and hover in the middle of nowhere. I prefer having the laser away from the wall because it gives you a little bit of space to deal with Colonel's attacks. Things get a lot more straightforward once you take out doubles. A lot of people don't realize how easy it can be once you take out double because they're dealing with everything going on at the same time. But note that the crystal is what can be attacked. It's gonna take some time, it's a process, but you can wear them down if you take out double quickly. If you have more questions about the charge shot method of taking out double, let me know and I'll answer what I can. All right, so for the final battle, we have Gate and Dynamo. Now, I hope you kept your meteor rain from 9-2 because it's really important here. In this particular case, I actually dealt with the worst case scenario, which is dealing with Gate's red nightmare spheres twice in a row. You need to go after Dynamo first, but you also need to be aware of certain one, of certain attacks from Gate. In particular, the red one. The red one kind of eats your inputs so that you can hit jump or attack and it doesn't happen. But once you're not dealing with those, you kind of need to get Dynamo into a little bit of a loop. When you hit him with the Meteor Rain, he will freeze for a little bit and then jump to the other side of the screen. He won't always stay there. His positioning is based on your positioning, usually. So what you need to do is time when you fire the Meteor Rain and then move from one side of the screen to the other, knowing that you might mess up a little bit. But if you do that properly, you should be able to take him out with not too much effort, depending on what gate throws at you. The other thing to be aware of is the blue gate sphere, which in this particular case kind of tries to suck you in like a vacuum. The main hassle is if you don't take out gate fast, not gate, dynamo. If you don't take out dynamo fast enough, things get a little too much to handle for a lot of people, myself included, to be honest. Now, you have a few different weapons. I wanted to test out a few different weapons for how to best deal with the Nightmare Spears. The Soul Body, oddly enough, is a decent shield against the backlash that can come from knocking out the Nightmare Spears. Let me explain those a little bit. There are five different types of Nightmare Spears. I already explained red and I already explained blue. Orange fires uh, energy projectile at you from a distance. Green basically just tries to move towards you and purple will generate nightmare viruses. Usually when you're dealing with these particular things from gate, you just need to hit them and the shotgun ice is really a good way to do this because it knocks it out in one hit. Just make sure to dodge the blowback that comes from it, which is also why I said don't use up too many of them in 9-1. But as you also may have noticed, just like when Colonel showed up, Dynamo shows up and he jumps as far away from you as he can and then fills the rest of the screen. Dynamo has no hitbox. So understanding that you need to dodge gate as well, either run into Dynamo or go into the top corner to dodge him. Bait out the Nightmare Spears from gate. And basically it's a little bit of a waiting game He'll do some damage to you sometimes, but if you practice, and the first time admittedly you're probably not going to win, if you practice, you can take this out. It's in my opinion not as difficult as Double and Iris, but it's still difficult enough in its own right. And a lot of what you have to deal with is the fact that you've got to space out Gate at this point because he's going to keep following you every two and a half seconds or so. And if he gets out a good amount of those spheres uh, at the same time, things get a little much to deal with. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I really enjoyed putting this together. Some of you may be wondering if I'm going to put together a Awakened Zero and Ultimate Armor X battle. And talk to me about that in the comments. See, let me know if you want to see that. I might put that together. 
they're actually a bit more difficult than the others, but I'd be willing to if there was enough support for it. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this series. Make sure to comment and subscribe and like this so that I know that this is actually worth doing. I'll see you for the next challenge though.